Uh, oh, thanks. So, uh, really, first, just wanted to say thank you to the team at Postman for putting this together, uh, allowing uh, Peter and myself to uh, participate and present to you. Uh, Peter is definitely the uh, better looking, smarter, younger uh, <laughs> portion of my team that is the solutions engineering team uh, and technical support team at EasyPost. Uh, and today we're going to talk to you about getting ahead of engineering. So um, first thing, quick poll. Uh, how many people here uh, have an API product that they sell? It's like a core piece of their business, like maybe a little higher, yep, a couple, there you go. Uh, cool, okay. Um, that's us too. Um, I'll, second question, how many engineers, software engineers do we have in the room? I just want to get a breakdown of a lot of engineers. That's kind of what I was thinking. What about like product people? Maybe some product people, cool. Uh, how about sales? Are there any sales people in the room? I know, maybe we have one or two, not too many, okay. Uh, and then what about like solutions engineering support? Uh, a couple of those as well. Okay, so Heroes, pretty much right. the way uh, I thought it would break out, uh, which is great, because uh, hopefully we're going to have a little bit of uh, something for everyone. Uh, so basically the way this talk's going to go, I'm going to give you a little overview of EasyPost, give you some context about uh, kind of what we do, and then Peter's going to kind of really dive into the weeds on sort of how we're leveraging Postman across the entire organization to help us scale. So first things first, what is EasyPost? Uh, EasyPost is a logistics technology company. Uh, we started with a multi-carrier shipping API. It basically uh, gives developers access to uh, over 100 plus carriers uh, through a single point of integration with EasyPost. Uh, we also do things like address verification, uh, obviously getting rates for shipments and label generation, and then obviously supporting uh, businesses with their post-purchase experience tracking shipments as well. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've also expanded into order fulfillment, basically uh, leveraging the technology that most of our API users are using to generate a first-in-class uh, fulfillment experience. Uh, and then uh, tertiarily, uh, if you don't want to store your products in our warehouses, we can actually go and pick up those products uh, and bring those into our network so that you can leverage our relationships with the various carriers. So that's easy post at like a really high level. Um, oops, just, there we go. Uh, so one thing I want to do is kind of give you a very high-level overview of sort of the architecture to give you a sense of uh, how many different APIs we're dealing with. Uh, obviously on the screen here you see we've got obviously users that are interacting with our primary application. That's the main point of contact. And we have a microservice architecture behind that. Uh, this only represents kind of three different carrier microservices that we have. You multiply this uh, by a couple of orders of magnitude and that's more or less how many different APIs we're interacting with. So definitely multiple hundreds of APIs. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. Uh, things are changing all the time. Uh, which is all to say, uh, I heard you like APIs, so I got some APIs for your APIs, so you can API well your API. <laughs> if you haven't seen that meme before, uh, now you have. Uh, OK, so then lastly, uh, what do Peter and I do? Uh, so we're on the solutions engineering team. Uh, that's the team that I manage. Uh, we interact with a whole bunch of different teams uh, within our organization. Uh, obviously, engineering, product management, support, sales. Uh, we sort of moonlight probably in some variation of all of those teams at different times. Uh, and so uh, what do we mean by getting ahead of engineering? Uh, what does that really mean? So if you think back to sort of like the genesis of EasyPost and a lot of tech startups, uh, when you're like a really small team, you have maybe, I don't know, eventually you get to a place where you have 5 to 12, 20 people, something like that, predominantly just engineers. Maybe there's a couple salespeople, right? Uh, and then we got to the point when, around the time I joined the company uh, a little over a couple years ago, uh, where we were about 70 people, and we still mostly had just engineers, salespeople, maybe a couple people in recruiting. Uh, and so what happens is, uh, basically, Anything that comes up that's sort of a problem or uh, investigation, a lot of things just end up getting lopped onto engineering team's plate. And so uh, we need to be able to figure out a way to kind of help the team scale, get the engineering team actually focused on building things uh, rather than investigating things. Uh, and so that's really what this uh, conversation is about. How, how do we basically taking as much, engineer, uh, much work off of our engineering team's plate uh, so that we can continue to scale as a business? And so Peter is going to go through and talk about some ways that we're doing that across the company. All right. Hello, everyone. Get ready for the most fun 15 minutes of your life. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we got five lessons you can see on either side of the room. 
Uh, now these five lessons, we have product, we have sales, we have engineering, we have solutions and we have support. But boy, do we have solutions. All right, here we go. So we got a problem on product, hot tamale. Wow, small hiccups in care integrations force engineers to pause mid-product. Now, what I mean by that is our engineers are working to, uh, to create an integration, right? And they're like, wow, I love creating integrations. But whoa, I'm getting an authorization failed error. Boo, boo, no one likes this message, boo. Now, what I mean by this is uh, if you're working with a carrier, you need to have credentials that are functioning. You can't possibly get a functioning integration if you can't even test it with credentials. So what we're able to do is we're able to keep our engineers from having to hit pause, having to pump the brakes at any point by actually just putting together a postman collection where we have verified that each of these calls works, the credentials work, thank God, and we actually get to loop them together. So what that means is if we're doing an integration with some obscure carrier in the Netherlands, what we're able to do is put together all of the different calls for the whole flow from start of creating a shipment to actually generating a label to actually manifesting it. We're able to put together all of those API requests in one collection and actually use nifty little variables to use the same verbiage that we're going to use in our code base. So something like credentials, password, incredible. Now the engineer has nothing can, that can stop them. They have no excuses. Please code. <laughs> Lesson number two, sales. Now, uh, wouldn't you know it, not every salesperson that we hire is technically savvy. They might not even know how the internet works. God, there was a time where I didn't know how the internet worked. I could have used this Postman collection. Boom. Whoa, a collection that walks you through basic HTTP requests. Now. Uh, this particular uh, collection, step zero, showing HTTP requests. It is literally a get request to text.npr.org. Now, when you do a get request to text.npr.org, you basically just get a list of headlines, which is exactly what you see if you go to text.npr.org. There's nothing confusing, there's no JavaScript, nothing crazy to throw you. It's just you see headlines and you see the exact HTML that comes back that is representative of what's on that screen to make it blatantly clear what an HTTP request is, and how the internet works. Now, from there, you can also go through actually creating shipments and creating different objects in EasyPost. So just taking through each of the different steps, you can actually ultimately send a package from, I believe it's from Johnny Rocket to eventually, I think I, think I, I have it due to uh, like Johnny uh, Torpedo, something like that. So you can, you can go through the entire flow of EasyPost and its API and how you go from the basics of creating addresses to actually generating shipping labels with a simple Postman collection that anyone can use with nifty little descriptions that actually show you along the way what to do and how it all works. Beautiful. Lesson number three, engineering. Now, our friends in engineering are lovely, delightful people and they don't always know every single corner case, right? And wouldn't you know it, there's a lot of overlap for corner cases between the different carriers, the carrier integrations that we build. Um, so uh, what we want to do, ultimately, is cover as many edge cases as humanly possible before we actually deploy anything, uh, at least to production, right? And so what Postman allows us to do is to check everything. You build up a collection of all of the different possible scenarios. Now, you might notice there are nearly 200 requests outlined in, in this series of collections. And I want you to be thinking, wow, that's not nearly enough tests. No, we need to be testing forever. And when I say forever, I mean until we get over 9,000, we're not having enough tests. So uh, with this, we can actually compile across teams with shared collections to develop over time. And it might end up being a little bit redundant tests, but hey, at least you covered everything, or at least as much as you can, right? So edge cases are just tests that you haven't made yet. Uh, and with that in mind, the tests aren't just going to be, hey, did I get a 200 response, right? With four lines of JavaScript in Postman tests, you can actually just verify, did we get an actual rate back? Did we return a rate on this request? 
Uh, and rates in the context of EasyPost, uh, we offer rating in addition to label generation. So that's like if you create a hypothetical shipment, you want to ship from here to, to uh, Timbuktu, well, then you get rates back from DHL because it turns out DHL can supply uh, the logistics to deliver that package. And so they say that it'll cost $200 and you get that rate back. And we verify that that worked, that that integration is functioning because we got a rate back, not just because we returned a 200 response. Beautiful. Problem number four, solutions. Now, you might be asking, how can solutions be a problem? Ha ha. Well, uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, clients can't always visualize the full possibility that we're trying to paint for them, right? You want to paint the picture. You want to weave a tapestry. You want to tell a tale, right? You, you, you got to pitch them the whole thing. You want them to understand the vast possibilities that they can achieve by utilizing this small sliver of the, the logistics chain by implementing EasyPost there for rating, label generation, address verification. It's a small sliver, but ultimately, if your developers aren't focusing on that, then you can do so much more. You can focus on the actual rating logic. How do you choose to select a rate? So boom, whoa, whoa, incredible. <laughs> JavaScript that actually demonstrates within Postman uh, selecting a rate based on various attributes. So you can see in the comments that what this code is doing is first it's checking, is there a guaranteed delivery date? Great, let's try to get it there as fast as possible. If there's only an estimation, great, let's hope it gets there as fast as possible. But if there's no estimation because the carrier isn't returning any travel data or transit time data, then we'll just go based on cheapest. Hey, if we can't get it there that quick, well, might as well ship it cheaply, right? Great. Now, lesson number five, support. Be the support you want to see in the world, OK? If you can't replicate a problem, you can't solve it. And I don't just mean by using EasyPost's API, right? And it's very important to verify that your particular API is functioning as expected, but sometimes that takes hitting other APIs down the chain, right? So you can replicate that problem by actually, in EasyPost case, hitting DHL's API directly to verify that the response that they're giving is true to form of what you're returning. So in, in a particular hypothetical, Let's say a customer writes in saying, hey, why didn't I get DHL such and such rate back in my request? Well, now what we can do is we, we might be able to replicate that, but who knows? Maybe it is actually our fault and something's getting lost in the mix. The only way that we can know that, though, is by hitting DHL's API directly uh, to get a response back and see that, ah, we are not getting DHL's such and such service level back in the response from DHL. Thus, there's no way we could be passing it on to our customers as a rate option. So by hitting these APIs directly, by using Postman's collections, it becomes so much easier as a support team to share these functioning calls to the, the uh, carrier's APIs. And again, I can't tell you how incredibly advantageous it is to have these Postman collections for these carrier APIs, because every time someone has to figure out how to get these functioning, and again, just because of credentials, it is insane how much time this saves by sharing these collections across the team. Beautiful. OK, conclusion. Tie it all together. Postman can. It can design your product. It can teach your account executives. It can test your API. It can present solutions to clients. It can troubleshoot your product. And wow, it can bake a perfect souffle. Thank you, Postman. <laughs> Thank you, Postman. Uh, now, as much as we have implemented within EasyPost using Postman, there's always more because Postman is just so robust of a product. Uh, we want to implement mock servers so that we, we aren't just passing, necessarily passing on these collections to our engineers to say, hey, here are some functioning requests. We can actually supply mock servers that will demonstrate the behavior we expect them to be building when they're building that API. We can also uh, implement documentation and examples because they really do have beautiful documentation built right into Postman. Uh, and always, and wouldn't you know it, I'm a big supporter of even more tests. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. That was it. Uh, <laughs> if anyone has any questions, you can also clap. Oh. <laughs> uh, <okay. laughs> uh.